Welcome to part three, where we'll be looking at our essential portfolio site design. Since the end of part two, I added some more content to my site and hopefully you're also adding images, creating sets and pages and your site is also coming together. Here's what my site is looking like now. I added some images to this splash page and a few more sets to this first gallery and images to each set within it here. I've added some information to some of these images so we can have a look at styling for these as well. And I've added another gallery page with some scans of published work. I'm happy with the content now and I think I have all the different sections of my site pretty well worked out. So it's time to customize the design. If you're anything like me, you've been looking forward to this part because it's going to be a lot of fun. The reason we suggest doing things in this order is because your content is the most important thing on the site and the design should complement it. So we want to be working on the design around your work, not making a whole site and then just slotting your images in afterwards. The site is there to make your work shine and it's much easier to make good design decisions when you're looking at your own images in situ. So we start on the website screen by clicking the edit design button. We usually call this the design section because it's almost a self-contained little area within DPG where you just work on design. We looked at this briefly in the previous video, so this should be familiar to you. Straight away, you'll see the website load in the preview screen on the left and lots of tabs and options happening on the right side. When you make changes in the design section, you need to save them before they become publicly visible on the site. You see the preview here, and if you do something and you're not sure about it, you can click cancel and the changes you've made since the last save will be discarded. The first thing you'll see is the themes. You selected one of these at the very beginning, and as I mentioned then, the theme is all the settings for things like the typography, the colors, and the sizes of things. With these pre-made themes, we've gone through each possible element of the site and set all of the options for you creating these different looks. You can choose one of them to use and customize it further yourself as much or as little as you like. Everything that's set in a theme can be changed and controlled by you, so the best thing to do is to pick one theme as a starting point for your customizations. If you're thinking of using a white background, then white is a good start. Or if you're going for a more dark or black background, start with the dark theme. If you want to go really custom and set everything yourself, the plain theme is a good option as it's quite simple and unopinionated. When you click on a theme, you preview it in this window. You can even preview different pages to see how those will look by selecting them in the top bar here. So click through these themes and you can stick with your original choice or go with something a bit different now that you have your own images in the site. I think I'm going to switch to the magazine theme and save that. The pre-made themes are always here for you to go back to. So if you make any changes, the original themes stay the same and a new version is made automatically called custom. If you're planning to really put some effort into customizing, it's even better to save it as a new theme straight away. Click the create button here to save the current settings into a new theme. Give it a name and click OK. So now I'll be working on this custom theme and any changes I make will be saved to this theme. If I want to try something completely different, I can just make another custom theme and save that and switch between them without losing anything. Next to the theme tab, you can see colors and fonts. Think of these as a color and font palette for your theme. For each of the elements that lets you choose a font or a color, you can pick from this selection. So you can see here are the colors and fonts for this theme. Now the reason for doing this isn't to constrain your choices. This is actually to make it easier to make changes. When you go to an element and you want to make it say red, you don't need to try and match it or write down somewhere and then copy it across or anything like that. You just pick from this same palette and everything's nice and consistent. What this also lets you do is change every occurrence of that color or font across the whole website in one go. Say I like this theme, but I want to try a different color instead of this beige. If I go to general and change the background color, I've made the background white, but the same color is in the top bar. It's in the hover color of the navigation. It's used in loads of places around the site. It would take me ages to go through and change every single one of these. Instead, I can just go to the color palette and edit this color. Say if I make it blue, all the elements that were used in this slot, they're now this blue. And it's the same with fonts. I can easily replace one of the fonts with another one, and that changes every piece of text that uses this font slot across the whole site. So now you probably see why it makes sense to choose a theme which is the closest to your own vision to start with. It's really easy to change the colors and fonts. So say in the magazine theme, if you don't like the red, you can make it blue in just a couple of clicks. You can also add additional fonts and colors into these extra slots. And these will be included into the font and color palette for this theme. Continuing in the style tab, these other tabs contain the settings for pretty much everything you can think of to change when it comes to the theme and maybe a little bit more. 
The tabs are contextual to what's in the preview window, so what you see on the left is what you're shown options for in the sidebar. What we've tried to do here is balance the freedom to make changes and get really creative with how the site looks with the ease of just moving some sliders and selecting different options. For example, we've put in sensible limits to constrain the maximum and minimum sizes of different elements to basically make it difficult to break things. If you work really hard at it, you can still probably break some things, but generally speaking, what you see is what you get here. We've worked really hard on this template so that it behaves intelligently within these constraints with the aim of looking fantastic for every single device, because that's really important. DPG does some work for you by scaling some elements to make sure that everything will fit on the page and different elements don't overlap. But we'll also be looking at the mobile version of the site shortly, where you can make some specific choices that target mobile browsers. The other section you can see here is the page settings. We touched on those in part two when we changed the gallery index view. The page tab controls things like the layout of the header and the navigation, the layout of the gallery page and the text pages, and also the footer. We've made this template almost modular, so you can mix and match different page elements to suit your own work. You're not constrained to any one style of page because the page is controlled by your choices. As I mentioned, the side panel on the right is contextual to what's in the preview window on the left. It shows us all the options we can change that are relevant to what we're looking at, or at least what's on the page. So in page components, we can see some of these options in action. Here you can choose between different header styles. As you can see, this just sets the position of the elements. The colors and the fonts are controlled by the theme. And the same goes for the footer. You can look through this list and see the different options. The headers and footers we're setting here are going to apply across the whole site. That makes sense, right? It would be chaos if the header was moving all over the place with every page you go. This main content section in the middle, however, is set per page. As I demonstrated earlier, that's what let me choose a different look for my main gallery and portfolio pages. Because I'm looking at the gallery page sets view right now, I see the options for gallery sets view here. I can click through the different layout styles and also choose where the set information, that's this title here, is shown underneath or on hover. If I click through to the index view, then I can see the style for the index view, and of course, when I click to the single view, that's the style for the single view. So for this gallery page, I can just navigate through each layer of the gallery and choose my favorite layout for each. Then I can do exactly the same for another gallery page and make different choices. So obviously I want to be sensible here. I still want my site to have a harmonious feeling when visitors are looking at the different sections, but this can be a really good way to draw attention to special work or focus on particular highlights with a really bold gallery of strong work in contrast to maybe a busier gallery with small thumbnails. It's totally up to you. The gallery layout is defined by its predominant features, like the crop of the image or the way it works with columns. Within each one, you can go much further with customization on things like the width and the number of columns, because again, those options are part of the theme. So choose the layout style that's closest to what you have in mind, and then you'll be able to tweak it further in the theme settings. The same is true for the text and contact pages. They also have a selection of layouts that you can choose from. So navigate to the right page, say contact, and then you'll see the contact layout options. The other thing you might have noticed in this panel is this area with the icons for desktop and mobile. This lets you switch views to preview just that, your site on desktop and on mobile resolution. In the settings, the little desktop icon means that it's only affecting the desktop version. That's everything larger than mobile, so it does include some larger tablet devices as well. When you switch to mobile, you'll see that some options have a mobile icon, and those settings will only affect the site when it's seen on mobile devices. If there isn't an icon for either, that means it's a setting that isn't targeting a specific size, so it affects all versions of the site. In components, you can see there are some options just for mobile. So for example, you can change how this menu looks, whether it's full screen or it drops to lay over the content. There are also options in themes which allow you to change the size of the fonts and things like the number of columns in these sets. I prefer to work on the desktop version first in full and then switch to mobile and make adjustments. But if you'd rather do it as you go along, you can save and switch to mobile view and back whenever it's convenient. So to put this all together in practice, here is how I personally approach working on the design. Starting out in desktop view, first I'm going to go through the page components, choosing the header, the footer, and also the page layout for each page. 
I'm starting with a gallery because I'm thinking of this as the main hub for my site. This is where I want visitors to go as soon as they click through the splash page. Try out all the different headers and see what works for you. Split top bar is a great option for a more classic navigation. Hamburger navigation is a good choice if your site has a lot of pages and a lot of navigation items. You can trigger the menu with the icon or text. And then you have the option of sidebar or full screen overlay. I think I'm going to stick with the sidebar, but switch the toggle for this menu to be text instead of icon. For the footer, I think for this template, for a busy image heavy site, Nano is usually the best choice because it's the most minimal while still keeping useful information like social icons and copyright text where it's easy to see on each page. But you can choose one of the others if it suits you more. The gallery sets view, I love this list view with the hover. You can also choose the position of the images so they're not filling the full background, which looks really cool. The slide view is also a very eye catching style that looks great if you only have a few sets. With the uniform grid, you can change the number of columns and the aspect ratio of these set covers so you can make them into banners if you wanted to, and that's the one I'm going to go with. Then when I click through to the index view, I'll go through and choose the layout for that. Now remember, we can change things like the number of columns and the padding and things like that, so I'm just thinking about what I want the images to do in this view. For this gallery, I want to show the images in their full aspect ratio with lots of white space. So I'm going to hide the information so it's a bit more simple and image focused. Then in the single view, I once again choose the layout, this time for the image when it's clicked and we see it individually. For this gallery, I think I'm going to choose stacked because I want to show the thumbnails for the rest of the gallery right underneath and I'm going to change the thumbnails to regular grid to kind of echo the index view. Let's look at the published page next. This is a gallery of some of the magazines my work has been published in. For this gallery, I'm thinking square grid and I'm going to turn on the light box. To do that, go to the media tab and toggle the light box to on and save that. Now that will pop up in a light box over the index view instead of clicking through to the single view. In the page tab, I can choose between the different light box styles. I think frame is the one that I want because it shows information like the name of the client here. Minimal is a good choice if you want a super clean, simple pop up with just the image as the focus and everything else fading into the background. Then I just have the portfolio page, which is the one I did earlier. I'm going to keep that in stream view just for change of pace visually. So this gives us three parts of my site, which look slightly different for their different uses. Think about your own work and what will work best for you. That might be having the same style of gallery across the whole site or trying different styles for different pages. A few other things to highlight while we're looking at the gallery page settings. I want to hide this gallery title here. I just need to go to current set and click the icon to hide the set information, which will hide the set title and description if there is one. This is done on a per set basis, so I can do it on the main gallery where I don't think it adds much to the page in this particular scenario, but keep it on for the individual galleries where it adds more context. Another thing I can do is arrange the order of the sets and images. I can go to arrange and then just click to pick up a set and drag it to a new place. This is a fast and easy way to do it right from the design section and the changes you make will be reflected in the main sets area in the admin. If you have a very large set or you're displaying the images as very large in the gallery, so it's a little bit finicky to move around in the design section, you can arrange the order in the set itself where you also have some more powerful order settings like ordering images in chronological order. Next, I can choose the focus point of these set covers if any of them are not cropping in on the correct area. You can do this anywhere the images are cropped, like the sets and index view, anywhere the images aren't shown in full. Go to selected item, click to select a set or image and choose the area that should be in focus. Then I have my text pages. The info page is set to bespoke, which means that I can go to selected item and position this text here by choosing where it should go. With the right image, it can look really good with the text partially overlapping, but maybe not so much for this one. I can click the image and choose the focus point and whether it's cropped in. If I put this text into multiple text boxes, I can control the position of each one of them too. So if I maybe have a list of clients that I want to add, I can put them in the second text box and position it across the page. 
Or if I head back to the page and components tab, I can choose a different style for this page layout. I really like split, which has the image filling half the screen here. The same for the contact page, switch to that page and I'll choose one of the styles from the list and components. This image here, it's being cropped in because of the height of the area is set by the theme. We can choose the focus point to make sure the right part is showing by going to selected item and then clicking on it or choose for it to be shown in full instead. And not forgetting the splash page, since I have the slideshow here, I can choose the timing of the animation to speed it up or slow it down. I can also choose a focus point as this image is filling the whole window, so it will be scaled differently on different devices. Choosing a focus point helps appear more consistently if the subject of the photo is away from the natural center. If you're going to select the focus point on these, you can set the animation delay on the slideshow to the maximum just temporarily to give you a bit more time before it moves away. By default, the slideshow loops until the visitor clicks through, but you can change this option to play once instead and specify a destination. If I choose play once and enter gallery here, the slideshow will show each image once and then automatically move on to the gallery page without the visitor needing to click. So that's all my pages accounted for. Now I can change these settings anytime, but some of the theme options are specific to the layout style. So it's a good idea to work this out first if I want to save a bit of time. So I'm going to make sure I've saved all my work and then move over to looking at the theme. Switching to the style tab, I already selected a theme I like the look of, which was magazine and created this custom version. So I'm going to continue to work on that. I'm going to edit some of the colors in this palette to change the vibe a little bit. I'm thinking maybe going for a blue tonal palette with a contrast color that I'm going to use sparingly just to make it pop. With the many theme options, there are probably more things here that I can go through in a short or shortish video, but I'll take you through the ethos of how this works and hopefully you'll find what you need with a little bit of experimenting. Don't forget, if you're ever lost or not sure how to make something happen or just need any kind of DPG help, you can send us an email and we'll point you in the right direction. So a couple of things to know about themes. Remember that the preview window is contextual. You should be looking at whatever you're wanting to change in the preview window. So if you want to change the navigation text and you have the hamburger menu, open the panel when you're working on it. If you change something and nothing happens, it may be that the element isn't present on your site at that moment. So for example, overlay text isn't visible in the navigation because I haven't filled that text in. But if you think you've changed something and you're not sure what it does, you can just put it back or click cancel and it won't be saved. If you have the side panel closed and you're changing the slider and not seeing anything happen, you might change this text to be really huge and not notice. But before you launch your site, or will be testing each page so you will catch any mistakes. The fun of the theme editing is really in the experimenting and because you can see any changes in the preview window, a bit of trial and error is the best way to get involved. I'll take you through a few key areas that you might want to change. These are the settings for the header. Here you can find all the sizing and typography settings for this header and tagline text and you can also upload a logo here. You can see that there are some settings that only affect the desktop, so you want to switch to the mobile view and look at those because you might want to have a big chunky logo on desktop, but not want it getting in the way of mobile too much where space is really precious. Here you can also see settings for the top bar, which is this whole upper area here, which encompasses the header and navigation. You can change the padding to make it more roomy, change the color or set it to transparent so that the content is visible underneath it when you scroll. The main navigation tab is where you can find all the settings for navigation. Here are the settings for the menu toggle if there is one, the overlay panel width and color, and the font settings for the overlay navigation. Here you can also find the social media icons that are in the overlay panel. If you have one of the other navigation styles, you'll find similar settings for it in this tab as well. Galleries holds all the main settings for the gallery pages. So there's a lot here you can adjust. You can edit the look of the set information, which is the set title and description if you have one. 
You can customize the set covers by changing the max width of this area and the number of columns and the padding. Different layout styles will have different options specific to them, but they'll be covering the same elements. In sets view, these are called set covers and the set cover information is made up of set cover title and description. So all of the different layout styles will have those elements on the page. Hover options refer to actions that happen when an element is hovered over. And another area to look at here is also the footer where you can change the colors, fonts and social icon styles. The splash page has its own tab with options for the text and the navigation here. You can also add additional links and make this enter text look a bit more like a button if you want to. And not forgetting the text pages, if we look at the text or contact page, there is a tab for text areas where you can choose the font settings. And the text pages tab has settings for more of the layout elements like padding and spacing of the text pages. Here you can also choose the height of the images if you have them on the text page. For the contact page, the forms tab lets you style the form and the button elements. As I said, I like to work on my designer desktop view, then switch to mobile and make any adjustments to make sure everything also looks great there. I wanted to look complementary to the site as a whole, but take into consideration the usability and readability on mobile. So it's important to make sure that colors and fonts are legible when on smaller devices. So with all that in mind, I'm going to continue customizing this theme and try out some different looks for my site and see where I end up. The level of customization that you choose to do is really down to your own vision for your site. So this can be as elaborate of a job as you choose. You can simply choose one of our pre-made themes and the upside of that is that we've tested these extensively so we know they look fantastic straight out of the box on all devices and you can make a great looking and great working site with very little effort. But if you want to make a more custom site with its own design identity, you can take a little bit of time to tweak colors and fonts and play around with spacing and layouts. And it's quite simple to make it look like it's really your own. With this template, we really wanted to make it achievable for users without a lot of technical knowledge and without coding experience to be able to really deeply customize these designs so that it doesn't feel like a one size fits all solution. You can make completely different choices and end up with a totally different site from someone else who's using the same template, which we think is really exciting because everyone's work is different. So a portfolio should be tailored to that. I hope you've enjoyed this dive into the design section and that I've given you lots of things to try and a starting point for experimenting with the design of your own site. Join me in part four, which is the final part of the series, where we'll be getting everything ready to go live. See you there.